Hi, I'm Christine Shu, and I'm going to walk you through the second half of the presentation today. Uh, my background is uh, 12 years in venture capital and private equity, specializing in biotech and life science companies. And I spent the last four years uh, advising and building companies in biotech. So Deshaun would have walked you through revenue and costs and forecasting. And we're going to go through the cost of capital section next. So the cost of capital is how to evaluate and prioritize projects, how projects will be assessed financially, and how to compare projects financially. The cost of capital is the rate of return required to persuade an investor to make a given investment. So for example, Biotech XYZ wants to raise equity to fund a clinical trial of its lead drug. Equity investors would require a 30% rate of return to make the investment. Therefore, the company's cost of capital for the equity is 30%. The cost of capital is dependent upon the perceived risk of the company or the investment. The less risky an investment is, the lower the cost of capital would be. How this translates in drug development is seen here. So basically, you've got uh, thousands of compounds at the very early stages. And those are worked through the funnel of clinical development until hopefully you have at least one successful compound approved by the FDA at the end. As the drug is working its way through the clinical development cycles, uh, it's being de-risked and the probability of success is going up. The cost of capital is going down as the probability of success increases, so therefore they are indirectly proportional to each other. The opportunity cost is the cost of the next best alternative that must be foregone in order to choose a desired plan. Opportunity cost is all about trade-offs. So in a very simplistic example, if there is an apple and an orange, if you choose the apple, the opportunity cost is the orange. Uh, in perhaps a more relevant example, uh, if I decide to attend graduate school, the opportunity cost of going to graduate school is the value of the foregone wages had I worked instead. Investors have multiple options to invest their capital and will demand a higher return, i.e. a higher cost of capital, to invest in riskier companies. In this example, which company would have the higher cost of capital? Biotech A has a drug candidate that is in preclinical testing and needs to raise money to file an IND. Biotech Z has a drug candidate in a phase three clinical study and needs to raise money to file an NDA. In this example, Biotech A has the higher cost of capital, its drug is in earlier stages, and it's riskier. Uh, so NPV is the net present value. This concept relies on the time value of money. It's the fundamental principle in finance that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. So the NPV translates an investment's value over time in today's dollars. The equation to do this is uh, the future value equals the present value times 1 plus the interest rate to the nth power, where n is the number of periods, usually uh, years in this case. So the important thing to note about this uh, equation is that the interest compounds on an annual basis. So this is not a linear equation. This is actually an exponential function. The net present value is simply the summation of all the present values. Um, in this example, Biotech X is considering developing a drug. It would cost $500 million over eight years before the drug is approved. Once approved, the drug will produce $1.5 billion in profit over two years, should the biotech company invest in this drug. So here you see all the annual cash flows laid out from year one to 10. Those are the future values. You'll see uh, the discount that we've selected here is 25%. And using the previous equation, you'll see that we discounted them to, to the present value today. You'll see the concept of time value of money at work here. If you look out in year 10, you'll see that $107 million is worth quite a bit less than the billion dollars in year 10 future value. So the net present value is the summation of all of those cash flows uh, in, the present, in the present tense. And you'll see that um, that equals 32. So what does that 32 mean? Well, it means that the NPV is positive and the investment would earn money for the biotech company. 
So the NPV is an indicator of how valuable a project can be and whether it's worth investing in. It means the invest so if the NPV is greater than zero, it means the investment would add value to the firm. If the NPV is less than zero, it means it would subtract value from the firm. If it's zero, it's neither a gain or a loss. Uh, so the IRR, the internal rate of return, is the interest rate at which the net present value of all the cash flows equals zero. So if you're, um, if you're looking at the mathematical equation, this is basically setting the NPV equal to zero and solving for the interest rate at which that happens. The practical use is the IRR can be used to evaluate the attractiveness of a project or an investment. If the IRR of a new project exceeds a company's required rate of return, the project is desirable. If the IRR falls below the required rate of return, the project should be rejected. In this example, a venture capitalist is considering an investment in a biotech company developing a drug for Alzheimer's. The company would require a $10 million investment today and another $20 million investment in two years. The VC expects to sell the shares for $90 million five years from today. The VC's hurdle rate is 25% for biotech investments. So should they make the investment? So here again, we've laid out the cash flows. So you see the $10 million that would need to be invested today, the $20 million invested two years from today, and then the $90 million in return five years from today. The IRR at which the NPV would equal zero is 33.5%. And what does that mean? Well, the 33.5% is greater than the VC's hurdle rate, so that means that they should make this investment. So in summary, the cost of capital is used by all organizations when assessing the cost of funding their operations. The NPV is used mainly by companies when valuing assets to acquire. It can also be used by equity research analysts when valuing companies and the future cash flows. The IRR is used mainly by investors when evaluating an investment opportunity. Uh, here are some advanced topics to look into. Uh, for example, you could look into uh, the discount rate, how that's calculated. Uh, there's also a lot of mathematical equations and variables behind that. So here are a few scenarios to consider in terms of parallels to academia. I would strongly encourage you to view Amy's presentation. She will talk about examples of opportunity costs in the lab. Uh, she'll walk through NPV and um, how she's decided on which projects to invest in in her, in her uh, experience. So for finance course objectives, by now you should be able to identify the three different financial statements and how scientists use them. Read and understand a P&L statement, calculate burn rate, explain and apply concepts such as opportunity cost, cost of capital, and NPV, and apply these concepts in financial planning. Thank you for watching our presentations.